Welcome to Swim Life Pro's tutorial on the basics of buoyancy. In this video, you will be learning the fundamental skills required to learn each of the six official swimming strokes. These skills will be the foundation of everything that you will need to accomplish in your journey to becoming a lifelong swimmer. The basis to all of swimming revolves around how well you can control your body in the water. When swimming any stroke, you should always be working towards being as efficient as possible, whenever possible. Before learning how to float on the water, you will need to master the art of breath control. Knowing when to breathe and when not to breathe while in the water will be crucial to being a successful swimmer. When your face is in the water, you will not be able to inhale any air. Therefore, you will need to be able to control when and how you take your breaths while swimming. It is important to remember that you should never inhale water while swimming. Only breathe in when your mouth is out of the water. Many new swimmers think that you need to hold your breath underwater. However, as with any form of exercise, a pattern of inhaling and exhaling needs to be established. Exhaling in the water, also known as blowing bubbles, is the first step to having proper breath control. Before you begin blowing bubbles, remember to fill your lungs with air by taking a deep breath above water. Start by lowering your face in the water to where your mouth is submerged just below the surface. Close your lips so that you only allow air to exit from a small hole in the center of your mouth. Exhale slowly, maintaining a steady stream of bubbles for as long as you can without any gaps in exhaling. The longer that you are able to exhale with one steady stream of bubbles, the more breath control you will have. Another form of breath control that is important while swimming is to be able to blow bubbles from your nose. Start by lowering your face into the water to where your mouth and nose are submerged just below the surface. This time, making sure to close your lips so that no water will be able to enter your mouth. Exhale slowly through your nose, maintaining a steady stream of bubbles for as long as you can without any gaps in exhaling. A popular exercise to work on quick breathing is a motion called the bob. For this motion, you can blow bubbles out of your mouth, your nose, or a combination of both. The challenge comes with inhaling air quickly. Start by getting a deep breath of air and blowing bubbles with any method that you feel comfortable with doing. As you are close to expending all of the air in your lungs, come up for another breath. The goal is to only breathe in once before lowering your face back into the water again to blow more bubbles. Try to see how many bobs you can do in a row without stopping. Floating is the foundation for every stroke in the water. Having the ability to easily float on the surface of the water will affect how well you will be able to learn future swimming strokes. The front float is a stationary body position in the water. For the duration of the float, your whole body should remain still and relaxed. The first step to having a successful front float is for you to raise your body properly to the surface of the water. In order to do so, find an area of your pool that is between chest and shoulder deep. Start by raising both of your arms towards the surface of the water, palms down while bending your legs slightly at the knees. Take a deep breath and kick off the bottom of the pool gently with both feet. As you kick off the bottom of the pool, lower your face into the water comfortably to where your ears are just below the surface of the water. Your body will naturally float from your chest. When holding your breath, your lungs act in a similar manner as balloons, assisting your body with floating on top of the water. Remember, the front float is a stationary position. Once you have jumped to the top of the water, you should not be fighting to stay on the surface. There are three general rules that should be followed in order to perform the front float effectively. Hold your breath, look down towards the bottom of the pool, and relax your muscles. The more air you have in your lungs, the easier and more buoyant your body will be. Lower your eyes to look at the floor directly below your head. This will straighten your spine, allowing your hips to rise to the surface of the water. After successfully floating on your front, you will need to make sure to dismount from your float correctly. Start by bringing your knees up towards your chest. This will slowly lower your hips in the water. Pull your hands back in a large sweeping motion, keeping the palms of your hands facing in the direction that your arms are pulling. As your hips lower in the water, drive your feet straight down to the bottom of the pool. A common mistake among newer swimmers is to look forwards in the water during the float. This will flex your lower back, driving your hips down towards the bottom of the pool. Another common mistake is jumping above the water to start your float. Remember, you need to jump up to the surface of the water, not above. Similar to the front float, the back float is a stationary body position in the water. Start by raising both of your arms towards the surface of the water, palms up while bending your legs slightly at the knees. Rest the back of your head on the surface of the water so that your ears are submerged just below the surface. Take a deep breath and kick off the bottom of the pool gently with both feet. 
as you kick off the bottom of the pool, your head should stay in the same relative position. If done correctly, your torso and legs should raise to the surface of the water. Remember, the back float is a stationary position. In order to perform the back float effectively, there are four general rules that need to be followed. Hold your breath, chin up, chest up, and hips up. The more air you have in your lungs, the easier and more buoyant your floating will be. While on your back, raise your chin up slightly past the neutral resting position. This will cause your lower back to flex, raising your hips towards the surface of the water. Broaden your shoulders. This will allow your chest to be as high on top of the water as possible, which will raise your hips as well as your overall body position. If done properly, your face should never go underwater for the duration of the back float. After successfully floating on your back, you will need to make sure to dismount from the float correctly. Start by bringing your knees up towards your chest. This will begin to lower your hips in the water. As your hips start to lower, pull your hands down and forwards in a large sweeping motion, keeping your palms facing in the direction that your arms are pulling. As your hips lower in the water, drive your feet straight down to the bottom of the pool. Three common mistakes among newer swimmers who are learning the back float are to not hold your breath, lowering your chin, and jumping above the surface of the water. The front glide and back glide operate in a very similar manner to the front float and back float. Both glides utilize a stationary body position in the water. While performing either glide, your whole body should remain still and relaxed. In addition, both glides are designed to be the most efficient form of travel in the water. In the future, gliding will be a necessary part of several strokes. Learning to utilize the efficiency of each glide will be an important step towards becoming a better swimmer. In order to perform the front glide, reach both of your arms straight above your head, placing both hands directly on top of each other with your palms facing down towards the bottom of the pool. Your legs should be straight and together with your knees and ankles relaxed. Similar to the front float, your chin and eyes should be pointed towards the bottom of the pool. Your head should rest comfortably just at the surface of the water with your ears submerged. Since your arms and legs do not move for the front and back glide, you will need to utilize a wall to kick off of in the water. While standing close to any chest or shoulder deep wall, lower your face into the water and straighten your arms in front of your body to the glide position. Place one or both of your feet up against the wall and push off lightly. If done properly, your body should raise to the surface of the water while gliding effortlessly. After a few seconds of gliding, dismount in the same manner that you would during the front float. The positioning for the back glide works in a very similar manner as the front glide. The only differences are that your face and palms should be facing upwards. While performing the back glide, make sure to keep your chin raised slightly past the neutral resting position. For the back glide, stand next to any chest or shoulder deep water. Rest the back of your head on the surface of the water so that your ears are submerged just below the surface. Place one or both of your feet up against the wall and push off lightly. At the same moment that you kick off from the wall, straighten both of your arms in front of your head to the back glide's position. If done properly, your whole body should raise to the surface of the water while gliding effortlessly. After a few seconds of gliding, dismount in the same manner as you would during the back float. Thank you for watching Swim Life Pro's tutorial on the basics of buoyancy. Please make sure to check out our other video tutorials in each of the six official strokes and treading water at www.swimlifepro.com.